Good afternoon, it's Jeremy. It's July the 1st, Canada Day. And today I wanna to talk about testing the um, Sawbird H1. This is the LNA BPF design for the hydrogen line. And in the previous video, I did a quick test uh, using my uh, uh, signal hand spectrum analyzer and just terminating the input just to get a, a bandpass characteristic on the spectrum analyzer. But today what I'm doing is I'm using the Nano VNA and uh, I got to admit, using the Nano VNA, it's such an incredibly useful instrument. Um, hard to believe, you know, when I started my career, these things almost didn't exist. And if they did exist, they, you know, weighed about a thousand pounds and took up a whole room. But this thing is just a small little device. It's absolutely amazing. So what I've got here is I've got the Nano VNA and um, there's my Sawbird. On the output of the Sawbird, I've got a DC block. I always put a DC block on my spectrum analyzer just in case, you never know. So just for being careful, I put the DC block there and I've got a 20 dB pad on the output. And then on the input, I've got 30 dB. I've got a 20 dB pad and a 10 dB pad. A 10 dB pad. And then I've got some coaxial cables going to the uh, port one is the output here. So it puts out about zero dBm. Now, if I don't have the uh, pads, I'll overpower the Sawbird. The Sawbird's used to getting a very low signal power. So now I'm, if I'm putting in 30 dB of attenuation, I'm getting about a minus 30 dB into the Sawbird, which is what it typically sees. And the same thing goes for the output. Since this is about zero, it's expecting at most zero here. So if I didn't have the pad on the input, this thing would, this thing has a nominal gain of about 40 dB. Uh, I would overpower the uh, nano VNA. So I've got, that's why I've got 20 dB in here and I've connected it there. So the first thing you do with the nano VNA is you select the traces. So on trace S1 or trace zero on my machine, S11, I'm gonna be measuring the SWR and the input port, which is this guy here. And uh, on the next trace, I've got S21, which is the gain from here to here. So you go through the calibration, you put the open, the short and the 50 ohm at the end of this cable. And then what you do is you put the 50 ohm on this cable for the isolation and finally connect the two cables together uh, to give you the through. And those are my terminations. I've got my open, my short, my 50, and I've got this little um, a female to female adapter in here. Over here, I've got uh, a USB hub and I'm powering the Nano VNA. It has a battery as well. I'm powering it and I'm powering the, um, the Sawbird. The Sawbird, typically, um, I power it from the RTL, but in this particular case, I'm just looking at the amplifier. So let's look at the results. The results are pretty, uh, pretty striking here. So there's the pass band that I saw in my last video, okay? And it says that the nominal gain is around minus 10. Now remember, we've got uh, 30 dB on the input and 20 dB on the output. So I've got 50 dB of attenuation. So basically what we're saying is the gain is 40 dB, which is exactly what the spec is. And you can see that the, uh, the width of the pass band here is about, let's say 65 at the top and around 75 on the edges there, which is exactly what the spec is. So this amplifier is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, like I say, using the uh, Nano VNA is is really, really useful tool.